الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة العالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه عنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن ذنيم of الله سبحانه وتعالى The most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Respected brothers and sisters in Iman. Today's khutbah will be the title. It will be with the title, Dear Father, Dear Mother, Please don't be a fire extinguisher at home, but be a refuge, a shelter, a haven, oasis, as much as you can at home. I repeat, I'm sending a message in the coming few minutes for the parents. Out of my experience and the problems that I'm witnessing nearly on a daily basis. I'm asking you as a father, I'm asking you as a mother, don't play the role of fire extinguisher. 
which means you are not there just when it's emergency to solve a problem. You should be always a shelter. You should be a refuge that your kids always comes to you. Not just when the disaster happens, you are there. Why I'm saying this? This is the title now. R the reason <laughs> why I'm saying this. You know, some of you know that part of my job here in this country, basically, to do some kind of family counseling, marriage counseling, we help some families, you know, when they have some kind of dispute between parents and their kids. So I noticed from my experience with tens and tens and tens of cases the following. That a good percentage of Muslim parents, and I'm talking about those who pray and they are practicing Islam. A good percentage. I don't have a, an academic study to tell you 75% or 82%, but a high percentage of them, they bring their kids in the age of average 13, 14, up to 19, 20. <laughs> this high percentage in this age, they have a serious problem with Islam. On top of that, something has to do with rejecting Islam with one of the famous titles, atheism, apostasy, rejecting the whole of the idea of Islam. They want, they are committing or already apostasy, ridda al-Islam, and they decided to become atheists, some of them. The majority of them, they have a serious issue, serious issue with some Islamic teachings. On top of them, the hijab for the girls, then some of them, not on top, they have a serious problem with some Islamic teachings, such as, you know, drinking alcohol, the weed, the drugs, but a good percentage of them, which could be equal to the hijab with the girls, is the whole package of the sexual relations. The full package. Boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, having a friend, doing any kind of sexual orientation, the problem that we are facing now, or the whole package, which has to do with the sexual life. And some of them, some of them, they reach to the point that as long as Islam is not satisfying my sexual needs, I decided to leave this religion. This, some of them. So now I'm just highlighting a phenomenon <laughs> that I'm receiving with a high percentage. Now, because of the experience of the repetition, you keep asking questions to understand what comes behind the phenomena. I discovered that high percentage, the majority of them, they share the following common ground. Number one, the majority of them, they are in public schools. <laughs> the majority, not all of them. Some of them in Islamic schools, yes. But the majority, they are in public schools. The majority of them, they have a big percentage of non-Muslim friends. At school, outside school. Which means when they want to enjoy, when they want to spend a good life, so the influence, public school, outside the school. This is something very common. At least I'm just highlighting a phenomena. I'm not doing a study. I'm telling you about what happens. So this is just a phenomena. Their parents, in most of the cases, they work with us, work with themselves like fire extinguishers. Just out of a sudden, 12 midnight, hello, assalamu alaikum, please, please, please help me. My son decided to leave Islam. And sometimes they might call you at 12 a.m. Now I'm asking the question because, okay, we do our best to help. But we discover that the age of these problems is average 6 to 8 to 10 years. <laughs> when the disaster happens, the parents, they do what? They want an emergency from the sheikh and the imam. Emergency. Because he left Islam. Do you think someone leaves Islam just out of a sudden? Do you believe so? It's impossible. I repeat. Impossible. You know, some 
agricultural plantation, the seeds, they were planted for years and years and years from, from someone or something else outside your domination area, Mr. Father. <laughs> so I'm sorry to say it. I have to say it. Where have you been? <laughs> when your daughter decided to leave Islam, it's not a sudden question, it's, it's not a sudden decision. It's impossible. No one, if he is raised in a normal, not excellent, just normal Muslim, Islamic, you know, environment, just she or he sleeps, then he comes in the morning, you know something, well, I think it's nice to, to try to leave Islam. Why not uh, to enjoy being apostate, <laughs> murtad? No, 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 no one does that. No, 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 no. It takes, because I, I, I sat with many of them. One of the cases, I was told by the one who asked me to give the, the appointment, he told me that this person, for example, he became murtad, he was about 20, 20 years. He said, he became... Uh, uh, an anti-Islam and, and hatred of Islam and we are not sure if he is an atheist uh, uh, but most likely he is okay I told him what do you think was the reason he said he was you know the, the imam or the assistant of the imam at the masjid dealt with him in a very very tough way just once he decided to leave everything you know I could not grasp it but I said okay this is what I was told I have no no information so in myself I said hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil on this imam and this assistant what did he do when I sat with the young man I can tell you as an expert I'm in the field of comparative religions I swear by Allah that this young man is reading books about against Islam at least in six years at least because the information that he has needs an average six to ten years to be grasped and the only idea simple idea for his father and the, fa the, the 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 friend of his father is what he came to the masjid the imam was tough with him and decided to leave islam he said ya allah what are you saying when i ask the same the same formula <laughs> okay public school a lot of non-muslims all the time outside and 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 and, 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 and so. Now, some of them, some of them, after they discover that there is a disaster about to happen, immediately they bring him to an Islamic school at the end. Of, by the way, what you have witnessed might be just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> the problem is not finished by taking him from a public to Islamic after spending eight years in this environment. You have not solved the problem. Okay, wh what is the message? I told you about the phenomena and the analysis. <laughs> What's the message that I'm trying to send, which I will finish my khutbah with? In a very simple words, I beg you, brothers and sisters, our kids, our sons, our daughters, they are a trust amana in our hands. It's a gift from Allah. And Allah says clearly, literally, قو أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة Protect yourself and your families, your kids, your sons, your daughters, your wives. Ahlikum. Nara. Protect them from the hellfire. So, one of the basic things of terbiya, you know, let's make a quick analogy. We use in Arabic language, we say terbiya in nabatat. The word terbiya is used for the plantation in Arabic language. We do terbiya for the trees. This is in Arabic. We say terbiyat nabatat. When you do some plantation, when you seed something, a tree or something, we call it terbiya. The same terminology, we use it for the human being, which is the terbiya. You all know. Even the Arabs, they know what terbiya means. Now, the basic analogy. How do we do terbiyat nabatat? Environment. Good soil. Clean water, air, oxygen, heat. You protect, you keep taking care all the time. Fertilization, you know, agricultural, fertilize all the time. You keep, if something bad, something wrong, you cut this piece, you be careful, you clean, you move it to the sunshine, you protect it from any kind of harmless. If you saw some insects, immediately you bring some kind of, you know, special, you know, materials 
to kill this kind of diseases all the time. When this small planet becomes a tree, most likely we leave it. خلاص, بس any moment, this small planet, anyone can break it. Anyone. Even by mistake. What do we do? This is, we call it terbiya. Terbiya nabatat. So is this thing what we are doing with our kids? So I'm not discussing just bringing food to them. <laughs> bringing food, paying their pocket money, taking care of their schools, paying for needs. It's something basic. We should not discuss it. <laughs> it's a wajib. It's a compulsory. Now here comes where we should be competing with the most important wajib, which is to be close from them, to listen to them, to be patient with them, to try to feed them with the concept of our Islam and our Islamic culture. It's your duty as a father. It's you have to guarantee that your son loves Allah. It's your duty. It's not the duty of the teacher at school, by the way. Teacher helps you. The school helps you. It's your, your duty, the minimum, that your kid should not hate Allah. Be careful. The best to love Allah, but at least not to hate Allah because misunderstanding or being ignorant or sitting all the time with non-Islamic, you know, feed channels or against Islamic feed channels. What do you expect him to be? <laughs> what do you expect? Your love, your sympathy, your empathy, your closeness, listening, patience, time, you know, discussion. Playing all the time, discovering the problem before it happens. And if it happened, it, you will discover it by its early stages, which is normal, عادي, no, no problem. Many of us, why I'm, as I told you, I am standing, many of us, they, for many reasons, they ignore, they don't care, they don't feel, they don't want. I don't know many reasons. Many, some of them, may Allah be with them, they can't. But the majority, they can but simply they are not aware or they don't care. So the end result, I witness it. I witness it with the father when he wants to be a fire extinguisher. The disaster happens, the fire is there, please help me. What can I do? Wallahi, one of them, he brought his son to me. Wallahi, by Allah, billahi tallahi, just because I want just to, to respect the, you, you know, the, uh, the father because I, I was really feeling sorry for him. The son, he was so rude even with me to a degree he started you know, making jokes against me. <laughs> I myself, he brought him so that I will help him to support him. So he came from his point of view to a scholar to help him. He was mocking, making jokes, he say, uh, um, I, I, have you, what did you study? This is how, how he stood to speak with me. His father brought him to me to help him to answer his questions about Islam. He made fun. He started making fun even if everything, of everything I, I was telling him about. He was not listening. So he asked a question. I start with well polite, you know. This one, immediately he jumps to another question. He does not care to listen to the answer, Aslan. I said, okay, I will close my eye. Next question. Okay, this is because, oh, you know, what do you think about this? I mean, listen, just to finish. Then I said, hey, what did you study? With this attitude, with this rude attitude. I said, comparative religion. He said, so do you know the Bible? He said, yes. He said, have you read it? He said, yes. You know, I'm controlling myself because I feel sorry for the father because the father lost his son. I said, I want to help him. I'm like the nurse now, okay? So I have to be patient. Then he said, what is the, fir what, what is the first book of the, uh, the Torah? He was asking me simple, silly questions as if he's making a test for me. You know, making fun of me. Then I said, la hawla wa quwwata illa billah. La hawla wa quwwata illa billah. Okay, so I can tell what kind of attitude, what time, where did he spend his time this son? I feel, I feel sympathy with the father, but at the same time, I feel so angry from the attitude of the father, where did he spend his time till his son reached to this level? How? Okay, from faith point of view, I know he's not an expert. But from ethical manners point of view, he did not even stop him not to be rude with me not once in the same room. So I can tell that he was a spoiled what? Spoiled child. I can tell that this man, gentleman, 
was not told once in his life, no, 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 don't do this, this is wrong. No, 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 he was doing everything he wishes because he was spoiled to a degree. He does not respect anyone on earth and he became an atheist. So it's, it's a package. It's a package, please. Let me finish by repeating the title. Your job to be a haven, refuge, shelter, oasis, all the time, not a fire extinguisher. Astaghfirullah, إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير Now let me finish with a simple simple principle in Islam Allah سبحانه وتعالى will set all of us accountable for two things for your intention, your efforts, regardless of the results. I repeat, one of the beautiful, excellent beauties of Islam, that accountability will be based on the fact of your intention, your efforts, not the results. I'm discussing the results and the intention now. Maybe the results cannot be controlled, but most likely, inshallah, according to the general law, you will see results. Sometimes you might not control. Don't worry. You will not be accountable. This is the most important thing. Because we know the example of Nuh alayhi salam. Do you think any of us could reach 1,000% of what Nuh did? It's impossible. About 1,000 years of da'wah. And he's from Ulil Azmi ibn Rasul, from the great messengers. Yet, he could not even convince his son. Not because he was falling in short. No, 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 no. His son... He was so wicked and he decided to be a kafir. What, what can I do? But the father did his best. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not blame Nuh. But he told him, Ya Nuh, la tas'alni ma laysa, fa la tas'alni ma laysa, laka bi'innahu amalun ghayru salih. Which means, stop asking forgiveness. Khalas, close the file. He's a kafir and he will be punished. Khalas, detach. Detach yourself. But Allah did not blame Nuh in any way. Oh, Ya Nuh, you have not your best you have not done your best, and therefore, look, no, 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 just leave him, he will be punished. Then, Nuh submitted, he said, I'm sorry, Allah, <laughs> I will not ask again. So sometimes it might really, you can't control it, but have you done your best? This is the question. Before we make dua, Khwani wa khwati, Jazakumullah khayram, I will say it in Arabic, then I will repeat it in English. يا أحبة أهل الدار تخصيصا قدر الله سبحانه وتعالى قبل سويعات انتقلت إلى رحمة الله تعالى والدة أخينا الحبيب من أهل المسجد أخوينا الحبيبين الأستاذ طلعت خير الدين والأستاذ فراس خير الدين اللي بيصلوا دائما معنا وهم من أعمدة هذا المسجد أصحاب روزا للسيارات وهم من أهل المسجد من أهل الخير ومن أهل العطاء توفيت قبل قليل رحمها الله ندعو الله لها بالرحمة إن شاء الله وغدا لمن أحب وكاد ظرفه يسمح والأجر عظيم جدا لمن كان قادرا غدا الساعة الثانية عشرة قبل صلاة الظهر في إسنا سيكون سكون الصلاة ثم الدفن لمن كان مستطيعا وفيه أجر عظيم كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الأحاديث الدفن في المقبرة عن ماينث لاين الساعة الواحدة بإذن المولى عز وجل Respect the brothers Our dear respect the brother فراس خير الدين and brother طلعت خير الدين is they both of them they pray with us in this masjid and they are from the very close brothers to us their mother passed away just a few hours ago may Allah descend his mercy upon her rahimahallah subhanahu wa ta'ala the janazah will be prayed inshallah tomorrow at Isna at 12 before the Dhuhr prayer so if you have a time please join us in the janazah prayer then the 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 bari will be on the ninth line cemetery inshallah if you have a time at one o'clock jazakum allah khair nasallahu an yarhamha rahmatan wasi'a wa an yaghfir laha wa yatagammadaha bi wasi'i rahmatih wa an yaghsilaha bil ma'i wal thalji wal barad wa an yarzuqaha ahlan khayran min ahliha wa daran khayran min dariha wa baytan khayran min baytiha wa hayatan khayran min hayatiha allahumma ya rabbi innaka ta'lamu anna qad nazalat bika wa anta khayru man yunzal bihi فتجاوز عنها وارحمها وعافها واعف عنها وجعلها من أهل فردوس على اللهم يا رب العالمين 
يا رب يا حي يا قيوم يا حنان يا منان اننا نسالك باسمائك الحسنى وصفاتك العليا ان ترحمنا جميعا رحمه واسعه عامه شامله وان تغفر لنا ذنوبنا يا الله ما علمنا منها وما لم نعلم صغيرها وكبيرها جلها ودقها يا رب العالمين سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك انت كما اثنيت على نفسك انت المقدم وانت المؤخر وانت على كل شيء قدير ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون واقم الصلاه لا لا بدو في صلاه جنازه حقيقيه عليها بكره اه ان شاء الله اه 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 صلي